Okay, so as Shirley mentioned, my name is Buki Adebayo, and I am the product manager for Waypoint. So earlier in the year, when I first joined the Waypoint team, I had not deployed an application since college. And back then, it was as easy as moving some files around. Or if you were one of those hip, cool Ruby developers, you were on Heroku, and it was as simple as a git push. So I talked to application developers today to find out what is it like today. And some people had really simple processes that were automated with CI CD, but most people had something a little bit more complicated than that. One Android developer I talked to talked about finding the magic invocation to deploy his Android app. Another person talked about a 90-step process. And finally, most people we talked to just had some sort of spaghetti script. And I was just surprised. I was like, it should be a lot easier than this. Why is it so complicated? So that you learn, in order to, to deploy and release your application, first you need to build it, then you need to push it to a registry, then you need to tell your infrastructure how to run that application, and finally, you need to release it to the internet. And if you're in a larger organization, there might be a team that writes your Terraform module so that you can provision the infrastructure you need, another team that handles networking, and another team that handles securing your application. And it's a lot of steps. It's really complicated. And as a PM, I'm already tired of talking about how to deliver the application. I just want the application on the internet in customers' hands so I can get feedback. And so when we looked at this problem, it reminded us of infrastructure back in 2014 when Terraform was, was introduced. People were using different scripts to manage their infrastructure ecosystem, and Terraform abstracted away some of those details so you could use one Terraform plan to, to provision your infrastructure. So we thought we could do the same sort of abstraction with Waypoint. You could abstract away the build, deploy, and release using Waypoint. You likely recognize this idea of application delivery as code from, Wave from Terraform, where you're able to capture the complexity of application deployment by borrowing tools and practices from software development. What does that actually look like? With Waypoint, it means you can use one waypoint.hcl file where you specify your build, your deploy, and your release, and that waypoint.hcl file will live in the same repo as your source code. So let me dive into what that actually looks like today. First, you have your build block. And that's where you define exactly how your application is built and how to push it to the registry. So in this particular example, we're using build pack. Um, and it could be anything, it could be Docker. So it's entirely pluggable and you can use whatever technology you, need to, you want to use. Then you have your deploy block, which is how you specify what your deployment target is. So it takes the previously deployed artifact and stages it onto your deployment target. In this particular example, I'm using Kubernetes. I'm biased, but how cool is it that you can deploy to Kubernetes with two lines of HCL? And not only that, this is entirely pluggable. It can be Nomad, it can be ECS, it can be Lambda. And then you can specify your release block. In the release block, that's where you open up your application to the internet. So that might be setting a load balancer or um, updating your DNS. 
And this is the last, the, part, the final part of the 8.8CL file I will talk about is config, and this is something I'm actually really excited about. Um, here, you can specify your static configuration values as easily as you set your dynamics, your dynamic variables. So you can, you can set your, you know, your app name and your email server address, which, which are static, as easily as some dynamic Terraform configurations or vault configurations. Um, so I mentioned earlier, how cool is it that you can deploy to Kubernetes with just two lines of HCL? I want to visit what that workflow looks like today. Today, you have to have your deployment.yaml where you set your image name and your image tag. And every single time you have to deploy, you have to come back to this file and update that. Then, as one person told me, you have to fumble around to find the right commands to be able to apply that deployment. Then you're in another YAML file where you're setting your service. Then another Kubernetes command to create that service. Let's go back to that waypoint.htl file to see what it looks like in waypoint. Again, it's just a few lines of HCL. In the deploy stanza, you specify that you're using Kubernetes. Similarly, in the, in the release stanza, you also specify you're using Kubernetes and set your load balancer. And then, releasing is as easy as a waypoint up, and you build, you deploy, deploy and release your application. And so you get this really easy deployment workflow for your developers, and we store the, the information about your image and pass that through the deployment phase into the release phase so you don't have to key manually update anything. We take care of that. And most importantly, you don't have to figure out whether it's called kubectl, kubectl, kubectl. Waypoint is just pronounced waypoint. And finally, waypoint is incredibly extensible. You can use Nomad just as easily as Kubernetes. Not to give you all any ideas, but if you wanted to switch from Kubernetes to Nomad, I know that the Nomad PM Mike would be incredibly happy about that. But let's talk about a real world scenario for a second. One of the teams I talked to as I was talking to app developers, they were a team of about four, four engineers managing a portfolio of about six applications on different runtimes, depending on what the application needed. So some things were on Kubernetes, some things were on Nomad, some things were on ECS. And in order to do that today, they would essentially have to set, build all of the, you know, the Kubernetes YAML that I just mentioned, all of this configurations for the deployment targets, and then write a script or automate that in their CI CD. And for each runtime, it would be completely different. But in Waypoint, it's actually quite simple. So let's revisit that waypoint.hcl with Kubernetes. You see our deploy stanza with Kubernetes and our release stanza. To deploy to ECS, it's as simple as treating that off and saying, okay, deploy it using the AWS ECS plugin. You set your region and your memory and release using AWS load balancer. And our team has sort of figured with the plugin, we set Com a common pattern for folks to use so you're deploying in a way that's sensible. And regardless of whether your, develop your app developers are on ECS or on Kubernetes, the process to deploy is still simply Waypoint app. And so there's no, oh, I'm switching teams, I don't know what the new command, how do I deploy in this team? It's the same. And more importantly, you also have the Waypoint UI to do check, health checks. You're able to see who deployed when, operational logs, a timeline of what happened with your or their application. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I know Armand mentioned earlier that we deployed, we, we are releasing HCP Waypoint on public beta today. And 
Back in June, we announced our private beta. We learned a lot from the usage of that. And so we're so excited to talk about all of the benefits that you're getting from Waypoint that I've just outlined without having to manage that Waypoint server. You just have to connect to your infrastructure and you're up and running. So first, you name your project. Then you connect to your infrastructure. Then you configure your repo. And you're now able to deploy using a Waypoint app and you're able to see, get that UI to see what's going on with your application. And finally, it's also with HTTP Waypoint, you can improve your overall security posture because you're not giving every developer access to the underlying infrastructure. We're using a runner to connect to the infrastructure and so you can easily grant and revoke access based off of that. So I often come to these kinds of things and people tell me, oh my God, it's so easy to do this. And then I go home and it takes 70 million years for me to figure out how, to, how it works, read all the documentation and get it done. So I'm gonna do a, a real time demo. I mean, not me doing it real time right now, it's recorded, but it is not edited. It's, it's as fast or as slow as it's going to be. So start. So first it's a, dem it's a Go app. See the go file and the waypoint.htl is in the root of the repo. Here's just the index.html with what the, uh, the go app says. And then here's the waypoint.htl. I'm specifying how we build it using Docker and I'm using an ephemeral registry to, as, my, as my registry. I'm deploying using Kubernetes and releasing using Kubernetes as well. So now I'm gonna to go to the HTTP Waypoint UI and I'm gonna set it up. So first I've already installed the Waypoint CLI. I'm the PM for Waypoint after all. So I'm then, then I set the context so that my CLI knows to connect to the HTTP Waypoint server. I install the runner. I can <clears throat> we give you the command to in install a runner on your infrastructure, which connects your infrastructure to the HTTP waypoint. And you can select what your infrastructure type is. So I copy that, run that in my terminal. And so we're installing the, the runner, waiting for the runner to connect to the HTTP server. And there we are. We're our infrastructure is connected to HTTP Waypoint. Now all I have to do is Waypoint init and the project is initialized. And as I mentioned, Waypoint up. I'm apparently a slow typer, Waypoint up. And we are building the application. We're pushing the image to our ephemeral registry. and we're deploying the Play app to Kubernetes. Deployment successful, now we're gonna be releasing the Play app. Service is ready. Here we are, we have our URL. I'm gonna just copy and paste that URL and put it in the browser. And there we have our Go app deployed and that was what, a minute and 30 seconds. So now I'm gonna just see it in the UI. So there's the Play app. You can see the deployment and the release URL. I'm gonna go to releases <clears throat> and see all of the releases that have happened. And so let's click into the deployment and you'll see, you know, this is the deployment target. The, the timeline of when it happened, you can see the, the same logs that were streaming when I was doing in the CLI, as well as the resources used. And I have a coworker at this point of setting up Waypoint who goes, yay, it's all set up. So I feel like I need to do that every single time I set up Waypoint. And then let's just make a quick change. So happy deploying, enjoy HashiConf and see how quick it is to, you know, update the application and deploy. Again, this isn't sped up, so it's a little bit slow <laughs> in terms, just in terms of how long it takes to build, deploy, and release. 
So I waypoint up once again. It's building the image. Pushing the image to the registry. Deploying play apps. So this, the, this, the um, output is telling us what's going on throughout the whole thing. So we're you know, watching it as it happens. And again, there's no fumbling around to figure out what the image name is and tag is. It's just updating. And then we're releasing using Kubernetes. All right, let's go look at localhost. Come back. Happy deploying, enjoy HashiCon. So it's deployed. And I can go back to the deployments and I see the new deployment is available. And I see all the same information I mentioned earlier. And so that's just how easy it is. Earlier, Armand also mentioned another big release for us, um, custom pipelines in technical, in technical preview. So when we talk to application developers about Waypoint, they often told us, yeah, build, deploy, and release. Yeah, that's, those are great anchors. Those are great lifecycle events. But I do other things, you know? And also, like, I'm not just deploying straight to prod. I might be doing a, you know, build, a deploy to, state, to, to dev, a deploy to staging, and deploy to production, and then releasing. And so we introduced custom pipelines as our answer to that. Not only can you introduce custom steps, like a snake scan as shown in this particular example, but you can deploy to multiple environments, and so you're not just deploying straight to production, you are deploying to, to dev, staging, and then production, and doing all the necessary tests you wanna do to ensure that your um, production release is stable. And so now I want to look forward into what are we thinking of over the next six months. First, I mentioned that custom pipelines is in technical preview. And so we're going to be making improvements on it. So please try it out, test it out, let us know what you think. We're going to be including um, custom pipelines in our UI as a sort of to give people access to you know, health checks within custom pipelines. And then from our private beta, we learned what people wanted to do with the UI. People were looking to use the UI for help, for even deeper health checks, for status checks. And we want to give them more complete experience around that. And finally, we want to be working with other products in the Hashi stack. So working with Terraform and building on the work that they've done with no-code provisioning, as well as Packer for our default image registry. So try out Waypoint. Try out HTTP Waypoint, try out Open Source Waypoint, and tell us what you think. Our team truly does value feedback. We think it's a gift. And we want to make sure that the product we're building meets your deployment needs. And with that, I want to say thank you. It truly does mean the world to me and to the broader Waypoint team that you all are here listening to me talk about the future of Waypoint um, and are at the HashiCon conference. So I look forward to talking to all of you who are here downstairs at the Hashi Zone um, and everyone else at home. I look forward to talking you all, to you all on the internet. Thank you. Mm -hmm.